Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to Inglogic. Today's pronunciation video is the second instalment of the series on the schwa. Last week's video, which you can find over here and in the description below, was about how, when and why we make the schwa in the first place. Today we'll be looking at how we can change a word into a different part of speech by using the schwa and then we will also see how the schwa itself is evolving. Last week's video was very long, so I promised myself I wouldn't cram too much information into this one. So I will be making a third video on how we can play with the schwa and sometimes remove it. And then I will make a fourth video on how we can change the pronunciation of some specific words in connected speech with the schwa. And now, without any further ado, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And let's get started. As a quick reminder, the schwa is the most common and also the laziest sound in the English language. You produce it by giving me the laziest and most energyless sound you could ever produce. It sounds like this. Uh, uh, uh. Which is more or less the only sound that you can make when you've just woken up. And let's not forget that it occurs only in unstressed syllables. Let's look at this word. The stress is on the first syllable and I want you to think about how you would pronounce this word, focusing on the last A. We can pronounce it with the full diphthong, A, and we get graduate. But we can also pronounce this A as a schwa and we get graduate. What's the difference? If we use the full diphthong, A, we get a verb to graduate, which means to obtain a degree after a course of studies. But if we go from A to A, uh, we get a noun. A graduate is someone who's completed a course of studies, usually a first degree after university. So we've kept everything else the same. The main stress is still on the first syllable, gra, but we've gone from A to A uh, and we've moved from a verb to a noun. So technically, we could say the new graduates graduated yesterday. This happens a lot with words that end in A-T-E. If we pronounce this last syllable as eight, we get a verb. If we pronounce it as ut, we get a noun or an adjective. We get estimate and estimate. To estimate means to roughly calculate the value or amount of something, and an estimate is this rough calculation. We have the verb to articulate and the adjective articulate. And careful with this word because a lot of people make this mistake. We have the verb to appropriate, which is a very formal way to say to steal, and the adjective appropriate. So we would say this is not an appropriate question. And we can also say that some people get offended when others appropriate their culture, which means that when people steal elements of their culture, these people get offended. To advocate means to publicly support something. So we can say we are against any behaviour that advocates inequality. An advocate is a person that supports something, so I'm a great advocate for equal opportunities. And careful with this as well. When you have an egg, you separate the yolk from the white. And yesterday I put the guests into separate rooms. So we go from to separate to separate. This, however, doesn't happen all the time. It only happens when a word ending in A-T-E has both meanings, one as a verb and one as a noun or an adjective. But some of these words don't. Some can only be a verb or just a noun or an adjective. For example, the verb to anticipate, which we pronounce as eight, doesn't have a noun or adjective counterpart. So the word anticipate doesn't exist. The same goes for adequate, which we pronounce as a schwa because it's only an adjective. We can't say to adequate. 
Little exception to the rule, this word over here, which is only a noun, can be pronounced as candidate with a schwa, as every noun should be, but also as candidate. These words having two ways of being pronounced is exactly what we need to segue into the second part of the video, which is how the schwa itself is evolving. So far, we've only seen the schwa as a weak sound that we adopt in unstressed syllables to replace full sounds, but we have two more that we can use, which are i and u. Now, the schwa is applied to all vowels, so any vowel in English can be replaced by a schwa sound. The sound i, however, is only given by e, enormous, i. Friendship. A. Percentage. U is given by the letter U. Popular. Now, I want you to look at these two transcriptions of the same word that I've taken from two different dictionaries. And as you can see, the pronunciation of the last E, which is weak because it's unstressed, differs. And they are both correct. Now, why is that? That is called weak vowel merger. So, whilst in the past and in older RP, there was a clear-cut difference between when we had to use the weak vowels, uh, i, u. Now, the lines are getting more and more blurred, and in this case, both options, uh, and i, are accepted. It depends on the speaker and their accent, and since these are very quick weak sounds, you may not be able to hear the difference between them in normal speech anyway. So this word can be pronounced with the i, actress, or a, uh, actress. And this happens with the following prefixes and suffixes. Useless, useless, palace, palace. Remind. Remind. And now I want you to try and guess whether I'm pronouncing these words with a or i. Secret. Newest. Behind. Heavily. Possible. And please do remember that both options are both accepted in these words. When it comes to words using a weak Oh, this happens only in those that have a U, and it doesn't happen very often. So technically we should say popular, but it's much more common nowadays to say popular with a schwa. We should say ambulance, but we technically say ambulance. So you can play with both, but I would recommend you use the schwa as it's easier and the most common. Let's have a look at this word. The prefix e is one of those that used to be pronounced as i, but can now be pronounced also as a schwa, u. But what's interesting here is that we can say edition and addition, but if I say addition, this also means the second word over here. So be very careful because depending on the context, if someone says addition, they can mean the first word or the second. Technically, this word can be pronounced as except with i and accept with a schwa. But if you say accept, I also understand this word. And I have to be honest, with these two words specifically, we try to keep the difference between i and a as clear as possible because they're very common words and we may understand something different. Sometimes the difference between i and a uh, is linked to accent. In British English, we tend to pronounce this as enough with i, and in American, they tend to say enough with a schwa. Careful though, when it comes to ing used as a suffix, we only pronounce it as ing, never as ung with a schwa, at least in standard British English. So we say running, not running. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. Do let me know in the comments if you have any questions and please make sure you don't miss next week's video where we talk about how we can play with and sometimes remove the schwa. In the meantime, I will see you on Thursday with my quick vocabulary video and next Tuesday with my next explanation one.